Welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Plant Face Ads. I'm Joey. I'm Tim. And I hope you had a today? great Thanksgiving. Yeah, Thanksgiving's over. We're still eating the food. So, yeah, but we thought we'd uh, kick uh, this week off with a meal prep. I just want to do a quick thanks to our financial supporters, Patreon and uh, PayPal. Thank you. Uh, we've been putting up some Patreon only content. I put up a 12 minute video uh, during the break. During Thanksgiving break, uh, just about uh, some, some, I don't know, talking about some of our traditions for Thanksgiving and some of the stories like when your mom, we were at your mom's house and the, the stuffing burnt, remember all that? Uh, the dressing. Uh, so <laughs> there is content on Patreon now that's there just for Patreon people. So if you're interested in all that, uh, there's a link below for Patreon and PayPal, uh, but Patreon gets you the extra content. Yeah, so this weekend really was nostalgic because uh, of Thanksgiving our traditions, what we've done in the past, because yeah. we weren't with anyone this year. Yeah. Um, and then putting up the Christmas decorations, so many balls needing meaning a different point or a year. Yeah. So yeah, it was I mean, really cool. I, to me, the, <laughs> the winter holiday season is always just a hassle. It's so much work for 30 days, yeah. right? But it looks good. It's worth it. <laughs> worth I like, it. I, I'm a minimalist, so I like everything just bare. Uh, all right, so here's what we're going to do today. Uh, we're, I'm going back to work tomorrow. Uh, Tim's going I'm going back, back to work tomorrow. Yeah, but I've been off since uh, two, last Tuesday. Uh, so I'm gonna we're gonna make some food. We're out of some things that we need just to get by the week. All right, one of the things we're making. Tim wants to make the, the ten vegetable soup, which I, is probably our, our most popular recipe. But it's also our favorite, I think. So I. I, it's my favorite when it's cooked. Yes. Right? To eat. Yeah. But eat. The, the problem is that is that it, unless you have a husband that likes to help you cut up veggies, I mean, you're preparing like a lot of veggies. It right? is. It's, it is a vegetable soup. Yeah. It's better than the Panera version. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's delicious. It is the best. So we're going to make that today. It's a lot of prep that goes into that. I'm going to make some uh, chocolate overnight oats. Uh, and then Lex needs uh, his mac and cheese powder. We, we've never done a video on this because it's, it's uh, my... Uh, Mykos, Chef Mykos' uh, uh, yes. re recipe, so, uh, and she's done a video on that, but we use her, her mac and cheese powder. We just put it in a jar, and then when Lex wants mac and cheese, we cook the pasta, and then we throw in the powder with a little bit of plant milk, or, mm. and that's it, yeah. right? It's like having, you know, the Kraft macaroni and cheese box, except it's vegan. And it's all whole food plant-based and yep. it's ready to go. So this is for Lex we have to do. Um, we're gonna make uh, spring roll fixings. Yes. So we can have spring rolls this week every night, right? Uh, and so we're just gonna have all that stuff ready to go. And then throughout the week, we'll just take the stuff out and roll the spring rolls. Yeah, so I think instead of cabbage, we're using some Brussels sprouts. We're gonna slice some Brussels and sprouts and finally them. chop them. Yeah, yeah, yeah them. just shred them. And that will be kind of our greens in there. Yep. And then we'll have like carrots and all that stuff too. So we'll show you how we do that. Uh, and we're gonna make spring rolls. So that's what we're doing with that. Um, we are also gonna do uh, a Brussels sprout recipe that we haven't even decided what to do yet. But we have another bag of Brussels sprouts and I want to cook those so I have a non starchy vegetable. Absolutely. Right? Having it ready is yeah. key. Because I feel like we already have plenty of like sweet potatoes left over. We got potatoes. And all that, so that I don't think we need any more starches yeah. and stuffing. I feel like I need some non starchy vegetables to go with that stuff. Yeah. So we're going to make that also. Uh, and I believe that's it, right? Yeah, I think that's it. That is good to carry us over the week. It, the, yeah. Just having that soup ready that's all in one. Yeah. I like that. That should be ready to go. All right. So I, <laughs> we just, when we film these videos, it's just you turn the camera on. The camera only stays on for 30 minutes and you have to turn it off and turn it back on again. Okay. So we'll just be filming all of this and they're just not my favorite videos to, to think. Yes, but they are. Yet. They're the most popular. There are inspirational. Yeah, From your them. comments, you like yeah. this. And you get there are some people who will just make it with us. All right. They'll turn on the video and like, okay. I got that on making it, which is amazing. All right, All right. so we'll get started on this. Uh, we'll figure out what we're have making here first and uh, let's jump into the prep, right? Yes, let's go. We have so many vegetables. However, I do not have any bell peppers. So I just reached in the freezer. We had some bell pepper. So it's already chopped up for me. So this is a shortcut. Handy, easy meal prep. So it looks like I just have onion, celery, and carrot to chop up. All right, and I'm gonna get, so you're gonna chop up the veggies. Yep. I'm gonna chop up the, uh, I'm gonna chop up. I'm gonna <laughs> prepare the, uh, the the overnight oats. Hopefully I'm not chopping anything. All right, so on my counter, I have jars on this side of the counter, just kind of on anchoring that end of the counter. And one of those jars is oats. Uh, we just buy bulk oats from Sprouts or wherever, unless Costco has a really good deal on them. And oats are really cheap, so uh, just buy it in bulk. And and they're always just on my counter. On my counter is uh, 
is the oats, the nooch, the nutritional yeast, the I have some flour, and then a, just kind of a, a jar with a bunch of bags of like mung beans and uh, you know all sorts of stuff that we've kind of opened and haven't finished using yet. And they're just kind of in there reminding me like, oh, I need to use that bag up. All right, so I'm making four because uh, I, I'm gonna have uh, leftovers tomorrow for lunch because I'm gonna film one of my days of uh, uh, what I eat in a week at lunch teacher edition. So I'm not gonna need it tomorrow. We'll have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So that's what I'm doing. What are you doing? Um, I'm gonna start chopping up vegetables for okay. the soup. Okay. All right, here you go. All right, so I've got my mason jar funnel here. This is nice because it's a really wide mouth funnel. It's made to go in mason jars. Then you can just kind of take your, you know, your half a cup of oats, pop it in, and just move on to the next one without having to go like this and get it in. It's a, it's a lot of work. All right, so you know I'm chopping vegetables. So I've got a bowl here in place for the scraps uh, going to go in the composter. Yes, I love the composter. All right. Uh, so my next I'm putting in uh, a half a tablespoon of cocoa powder. I, just, I get this from Costco. It's the organic fair trade cacao powder. So that's what I'm putting in. Half a tablespoon. Actually, I have a half a tablespoon measurement, and I think that's it right there. Same thing. I still use this thing here. Let's go to each one of these. Because this is a soup, my style of cooking is going to be a little bit more of a rough chop and not super fine like you would make for a, a, a salad of some kind. Yeah, you don't want them diced or anything, yeah. yeah. I'm putting in a, a tablespoon of maple syrup in each one of these. And these are my chocolate peanut butter oats. So maple syrup in. I'm using uh, some Costco chocolate chips. Obviously not a whole food, but there's not much going in. Costco changed the bag on their on their chocolate chips. They have two, two different ones. There's kind of this brownish bag, and those are not vegan. They have milk chocolate in them. And then there's the semi-sweet chips, and these are made with soy, and they are vegan. And the bag has now changed. And these are a seasonal item. They only have them a few months out of the year. So I literally buy four or five of these bags to hold me over the whole year. So I'm not like, you know, stuck where I don't have them. Uh, so we're gonna put in a half a tablespoon. So here's my half tablespoon measure right here. I'm just gonna put this in each one. And that's like 10 chips in each one. That's really all you get for what's gonna come out to about 450 calories. I have been Butterfingers all day. Oh my it's God. It's almost like there's a hen brain coordination problem. It seems to be working online when you buy stuff. I've, um, bye, bye. I've doubled, I'm doubling the vegetables on this. So there's just a little bit left. I'm just You're doubling the vegetables. Right, be careful because the pot is so big. Okay. All right. Uh, so next I've got uh, some chia seeds. So I'm going to put in a tablespoon of chia seeds here in each one of these. I like to use this thing because the chia seeds kind of go all over the place if you don't. So the last thing I'm putting in here is, uh, this is going to have peanut butter in it. I'm using the, the PB2 or the PB Fit. Uh, powdered peanut butter. I'm gonna make the peanut butter first and then uh, mix it all up and split it four ways between this. It's a tablespoon of the powder. So I'm gonna put four tablespoons of this powder into this glass bowl right here. And then I'll, once I add the water and mix it all up, I'll split it between the, uh, between the jars four ways. All right, so I've got my four tablespoons and I'm just gonna go over to the Berkey and get just under four tablespoons of water, like three maybe, uh, and mix it together and make sure I get a peanut butter consistency. I'm putting uh, three quarters of a cup of uh, plant milk, I'm using oat milk, into these, uh, these overnight oats. All right, so I'm just gonna take a spoon and kind of mix these up, just to kind of get them all combined. You could shake them too, I guess. But I wanna get all of the stuff on the bottom out of there. What? Just, on, just an FYI, I don't know if you see this lid, but it is a leak-proof lid that Ball makes. And there's a standard white plastic lid, but this one is a leak-proof one. Yeah, they're, they're different. So just something to think about or if you're out shopping, there is a difference. All right, so I'm just gonna take my peanut butter now, kind of get it all into a one area, and just kind of break it up into four pieces and put a fourth of this mixture into each one of these. So that's about this right there. All right, that's one, 
Just drop it in there. That's two. That's three. And that's four. All right, so you can see here, that's what they look like. Each one of them has like a glob of that peanut butter, which is just already starting to sink in there. So uh, it's looking pretty good. All right, I'm just gonna put the caps on these and get these into the fridge. And now I have breakfast for uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. All right. All right, so I've smashed the garlic. I've got a little chopper here. We're gonna chop this so fine that we don't get a glob or a taste of garlic. Um, so little pieces goes a long ways, but I've released some aromatics by smashing it. Let's How strong don't look. I chopped all the vegetables up. Oh, good for you. I, I suck at chopping vegetables. Good for you. And it, good <laughs> for you. I, <laughs> I, uh, I suck at chopping vegetables. I, I feel like every minute seems like an hour when I'm chopping vegetables. So maybe it's just a me thing. All right, so what do you have in here? You have the uh, celery, you've got the onions, you've got the carrots, you've got the garlic, right? Correct. And uh, we also have the our... Are the peppers in there too? Yeah, already? our red, green, and yellow bell peppers. The, if you look at the recipe, it's asking for plabano peppers. I've got a plabano and an Anaheim. So I've got a, a different green here, and then a darker green here. So we've got a plabano and a, like a Anaheim chili. So I get these from a predominantly Hispanic grocery store. Food City here, I absolutely no. love them. They, they, have all, they have all the best stuff. No, but so. seriously, yeah. they have these peppers and they grill them or char them and then bag them up. So I pick up some of those and I portion them out and freeze them and then they're ready to go. Because it's, it's hard to sometimes find them and then it's hard to keep them fresh or we don't use them all the time. No. So anyway, this frozen option yeah. is perfect. No, I absolutely love it, yeah. And then just having that charred uh, flavor is great. It's just another layer, you know, of that flavor. The flavor. Yeah. How many poblanos does it say? Well, it calls for uh, three quarters of okay. a cup, but I was short on some of the other bell peppers, so we're good. I'm just gonna Recipes use... out the window. We don't need any of that stuff. You know how I am. Yeah, that, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> All right. So while you're making that, next on my list is oh the. Uh, the mac and cheese, uh, the powdered mac and cheese powder. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna get the spices together, but I wanted to show you these, since it's Christmas holiday season and you maybe don't have a wish list, these spoons fit into spice jars. You can see they're kind of rectangular in shape, a little bit more narrow, and that works. I think these are from Sur La Table, but you can find them elsewhere. All right, so for this uh, mac and cheese powder, we just, we're not putting anything wet in. It's all just dry ingredients. So we're starting off with uh, a cup of cashews. So this is just whole cashews from Costco. So I'm just gonna measure out a whole cup, you know, roughly. Right there it is. There you go, right there. Then I'm dumping in three quarters of a cup of nutritional yeast. Nooch. After that, I'm putting in a quarter of a cup of oat flour. I don't buy oat flour. If I open up our flour drawer in the, the, the pantry, there's probably 40 different flowers in there. And the last thing I need is one more flower. So uh, I just, I mean, I just grind up the, oat, the oats, the overnight, the overnight oats, the uh, old fashioned oats. I just put them in the, the Vitamix attachment and I grind them until they're, or I beat, you know, I blend them until they're flour. Uh, so that's where my oat flour comes from. I'm not paying for oat flour. So quarter a cup of oat flour right there. We need uh, some spices. So we need a tablespoon of paprika, uh, which seems like a lot, but uh, this makes like five servings. So tablespoon of paprika. Uh, we also need a tablespoon of organic sugar. Organic sugar is vegan. So I'm popping that in there. Uh, we need two teaspoons of powdered mustard. See what Tim was just talking about a minute ago, how those rectangular uh, measuring spoons fit in the jars. This does not. Right, it's a uh, it's a, a measurement of a tablespoon. Doesn't fit in the jar, which annoys me. Uh, so the one he was using does. All right, so I've got two teaspoons of powdered mustard. So let's get the rest of that in there. All right, I mean there's, there's very little left in the jar. I'm just going to use the rest of it. I mean, how mustardy can it be? Uh, and after that, we've got two teaspoons of sea salt or, or Himalayan salt. Uh, Nobody in this house is watching salt. We don't have any problems with blood pressure in this house or anything like that. Uh, I think 
it's just because we don't eat out normally. So, which is where, and we don't eat a lot of packaged food, and that's where the majority of the salt comes from. So, we have found that putting salt in recipes or sprinkling it on, on your food does not contribute to enough to us having health problems. Uh, but, you know, if you're eating, if you're washing your salt, then you can cut that down. Remember, this does make five recipes. So, so now we have two teaspoons of onion powder, and I'm just putting like two te heaping teaspoons in. So I've got my, and I always do this when I do a recipe, I go over it and I put everything in. I've got the cashews, I've got the nutritional yeast. I've got the oat flour. I did not put the tapioca flour in, which is right here. Uh, tapioca flour, a quarter of a cup. This is why you go through these recipes. This is what's gonna help it uh, thicken. So, all right, quarter of a cup of tapioca flour. There you go. Now I've got everything. All right, this recipe is interesting because it's gotta be blended well. Those cashews, everything has to be like, like powder at the end, otherwise it'll just clump in when you make the mac and cheese. At the same time, you don't want the cashews to heat up so much that they start getting moisture and it starts becoming a wet clump. Because if that happens, you're in trouble. This has to stay dry because it just stays in the jar in the cabinet. So I'm gonna pulse it a little bit and then I'm gonna just kind of get the blender on it long enough to mix it, but not to overdo it. Stuff just went everywhere. I'm not sure how because it's on here, but all right. Okay, I thought I would just throw a pro tip. So my last ingredient I'm getting for the dry spices uh, is lemon zest. Um, when we juice lemons once a year, I take some zest as well, and we freeze it in jars. So I don't know if you can kind of see it, but I just wanted you to know that you could freeze this and we used it Thanksgiving, we're using it yeah. now. I'm just coming around here and scraping the sides off and I can feel it's kind of getting a little moist. So we need to be at the end of this. I think we're pretty close to it. I'm just gonna pulse it a few more times and I think we're done. This recipe calls for eight cups of broth. So we have our Better Than Bullion from Costco. It's oil-free, this version. So right. it's a tablespoon for a cup. So. It's a teaspoon for a cup. teaspoon. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So here, use this right here. Perfect. And, okay. Uh, so once so you'll put eight teaspoons in, and then you put eight cups of water in, mm -hmm. uh, and mix it all up. And we just use the, the the countertop tea kettle that is an induction, or however it heats up. I love that thing. You don't. It's, so fast, it's right? so fast. I'm just gonna pour this powder right in here. I'm gonna use my uh, my little uh, mason jar funnel to take out the little blade, so I don't cut myself. This is that kettle Joey's talking about. It's induction, boils water really fast. So um, it's, it's helped us a lot when we need broth. Simple, simple, simple. All right, so there's my powdered mac and cheese. So here's how this works. I'm starting by taking some pasta and cooking it to the manufacturer's instructions. Here I'm using about 12 ounces of pasta. So that's about two servings of that cheese sauce. Once the pasta is cooked, I'm gonna take it to the sink and let it drain. While it's in the colander, I'm gonna take the same pot I cooked that pasta in, set the cooktop temperature to low, and pour in one cup of milk for every serving of the powdered cheese that I'm using. I'm using two servings of powdered cheese here, so I'm using two cups of oat milk. I'm gonna turn the heat up just a little bit, and I want the oat milk to get to the point where it's starting to steam right before it starts simmering. Because when I throw that cashew powder in there, cashews thicken when they're really hot and I want that to happen pretty fast. I'm just gonna keep whisking it so it doesn't burn. And while you can't see it here, there is some steam coming off the pot, so I know this is ready for the powder. Now I'm adding one third of a cup for each serving of the cheese powder. Remember, I'm making two servings here, so I'm using two third cup measurements. Then I'm gonna just take my whisk and whisk that together. And the idea is that this will start thickening up and become a cheese sauce. If the oat milk is pretty hot, that should happen really fast. If the oat milk isn't hot enough, it'll take a while for the oat milk to get to the temperature where the, ch where the powdered cheese will start becoming a thick sauce. Either way, eventually you're gonna wind up with a much thicker mixture like I have right here. You can kind of see the texture's change. It is much thicker. This is kind of ready to go the way it is. Now I'm turning the heat down to almost off, just warm because it's thick enough. And then I do one extra step, and you don't need to do this because it's gonna be edible just the way it is, but I like to take the stick blender and take it and just keep blending so there's no more little, uh, you know, in case some of the cashews didn't 
didn't get to be ground enough, this will make sure that I have a completely smooth uh, cheese sauce on here. Now I'm turning off the heat completely. And then I just take the whisk one last time and kind of mix it around, and there you go. It's a beautiful cheese sauce. This thing is so ready for the pasta. Now I go to the sink and grab the pasta and take the whole pasta colander and just get, try it. Try and get it into the pot here. I probably should have used a bigger pot. And remember, the heat's off now. So all you're doing is mixing it so it all comes together. The pasta is already cooked. The cheese sauce is already thick. You're just mixing it together. And look how good that looks. I mean, this is not something I really could eat often because it's just cashew based. Uh, but Lex loved this and occasionally I'll have a little taste of it. My son loves this. Uh, your kid's gonna love this too. And having this powder in the pantry is a perfect option. If you're sitting here thinking I should make this, you should make this. There you go, comes together real quick. All you need to do is keep the powder in the pantry and you're ready to go. All right, are we ready to make this? We are. The first thing we need to do is heat up uh, some of the broth uh, and we'll saute the veggies. So you've got the broth there. Let's just pour in a small bit of it. We just wanna put enough in to get the veggies heated. It's maybe like a tablespoon or two. I think that's good. All right. So we did it just to cover the bottom. Yeah. And I don't, <laughs> I can't find the tripod mount to my overhead camera, so I can't use it. Okay. So I'm just gonna, you're gonna see me like do this, so you could see, you know, how much, how much water we put in or how much broth. It's not much, right? You can just kind of see it right there. It's not much. All right, so we're just gonna let that get hot, and you can kind of see it, maybe not, because it's an induction cooktop. The steam's already happening, so we can throw that stuff right in. Okay. We're just gonna dump all that right in there. There you go. And a lot of veggies. Holy smoke. All right. Oh, All right. Putting some grains in there, so this is going to be that 50-50 plate. Right? All right, let's mix that up a little bit. Okay. Uh, and we could put a little bit of salt here to sweat the veggies if you want to do that. I think we got enough salt that it asked for earlier. All right. And um, there's salt in the broth in here. Just worried about it getting too salty. Okay. When Tim's here, he's the star. There's not room for me. All right, so, I mean, I don't have a camera over this. I do have a full recipe on this right here. You can click on that video and i show you exactly how to make it with this with the second camera. Let's give that a few minutes. We're gonna give that like five or six minutes yep. to cook. I want the carrots to be a little, I don't want them to be hard, all right? Oh, really? uh, yeah, because it takes the, them longer to, to soften up than everyone else. So we'll get, I think we're just gonna give it like six minutes to saute here uh, and we'll just keep stirring it and we'll just give all the vegetables time to, to soften. Yeah, so these are the the vegetables I did earlier. We still have peas to put in and the corn. Um, that'll come in a little bit later. Yeah, this is just the saute stuff because the peas, like, they're, yeah. they just got to get hot. You can eat them. There's nothing to cook, so. Yeah. All right, while we're waiting for that to cook, I just want to show you something else that I do. Uh, I, this is the, this is pearl barley. I keep wanting to say Pearl Bailey because when I was growing up, there was an actress named Pearl Bailey. Uh, Pearl Barley, and this is the Bob's Red Mill Pearl Barley. It's the uh, the premium quality uh, organic Pearl Barley, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and I just throw it in one of these jars and it, it just kind of stays fresh in there as I need it. And I just like, it's a plastic bag. So I cut off like the bag that says Pearl Bailey. <laughs> it says pearl barley and i just toss it in there with this when it's you know in the cabinet and i pull out with all my uh with all my uh grains because i have a pull out all my grains are in jars right uh there's this and red lentils and green lentils and and uh quinoa just, and sometimes when i'm looking at this i'm like is this barley or is this sorghum like i don't know actually those are interchangeable but uh, so that at least, I don't have to write anything, that kind of helps us. That's kind of one of the things that we do. I can start to hear a little bit of sizzle, so it's just starting to warm up. That's me, sweetie. Okay. <laughs> this is smelling so good. Those roasted poblano peppers and Anaheim peppers we're using definitely is bringing up that char, yeah. smoky feel. You can smell so it. we have one can of fire roasted tomatoes. The rest are going to be plain. So I feel like that will overcompensate it yeah. for it. So we'll be good. This is going to be flavorful. So, bad me, I put all the spices in one bowl versus showing you each one, but I wanted to just uh, go through what is in this bowl. So we have our paprika, our cumin, yep, and then we've got our lemon zest that was from the freezer. Um, we have rosemary leaves. We do. And basil. And we do not have basil. All right, that's all right. Sea salt, 
We have sea salt, white we pepper. have white pepper. Onion powder. We have onion powder, and we have garlic powder in here. And two bay leaves. And two bay leaves. The bay leaves are in here. I'm gonna retract those. We're gonna save those for our later time. Right now, we're gonna incorporate and activate these spices. I yeah, think, so right? but every, everything except for the bay leaves in. The recipe uh, will be, uh, there'll be a link to our website. All right, let's go ahead and drop all those in. You can start seeing the different spices that are in there. Yeah. All right, just keep going. You can take the leaves out when they go in, so. All right, there you go. All right. All right, so we're gonna put the spices in. Give it like a minute or two. Actually, like one minute's probably fine. Just to get the spices activated. You can smell them, right? Like, they are activated. Holy smoke. All right, now we need to get the, uh, are you gonna put the, uh, what is it? I think basil. Basil, yeah. So put a little bit of that in. All right, that's good. It's one cup, isn't it? Or one, one tablespoon? Oh my gosh. Uh, it is a, uh, a tablespoon, yes. Yeah. A cup of basil. All right, so let's mix that in, and then we're gonna need to put the tomato paste in next. All right, so you want that to just work for a minute, get the spices activated, which is pretty much what we did. Uh, so next we're gonna put in uh, the tomato paste, all right. Yeah, add the tomato paste. So how much of that are we putting in? Just pop think it's that. two tablespoons? No, just pop that in there. All right, so you see the tomato paste is in there, and Tim's just gonna mm -hmm. give this a mix. Yep, just kind of mix it all up. We wanna get that all mixed in. All right. So uh, we, want, we want the tomato paste to kind of get charred a little bit and start sticking to the bottom. Uh, and then we'll use, it'll create, it'll create a fond, right? right? Like we'll throw in some broth and have a fond. So, so if like you get four minutes. Yeah, if you get some stickiness on the bottom, that's exactly what's supposed right. to be done. Yeah. And that's why the wooden spoon to kind of yeah. scrape that off and that's flavor. So, so we're gonna let this cook for like four minutes. Kind of we're at that four minute mark now. So I'm gonna scrape the bottom and Joey's gonna film it so we can show you what that looks like. Well, we're gonna throw in a half a cup of broth, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna throw in a half a cup of the vegetable broth. We still have a lot of it left. All right, and then let's go ahead and have you scraping it. So see and that on the bottom? See, yeah, that char, yeah. right. And then that right there gets it off and that's, that's all the flavor right there. That's the fond, right? Yeah. Yeah, so you wanna get all that off there. See how, that's see how that there? is? Yeah. yeah. That's like the flavor right there. All that little like charred stuff on the bottom that's not burnt but cooked, that stuff comes off with, uh, with, uh, uh, with the broth and creates a fond. Yeah, so this perfect. wood spoon, a flat spoon, perfect. All right. You know, we do this and like you said, that flavor, and I'm like, at the, in the beginning I was like, why is there so many steps? Yeah. But that makes sense. You got the lay of the flavor. All right, we yeah. need to get the rest of the stuff in. Okay. Uh, so it's time to get in the, the, ve the veggie stock, so pour okay. the rest of the stock. And that'll stop the rest of it from burnt, from cooking. All right, so that's good. Uh, so pouring it into the wall, the pan, keep everyone safe, it's not gonna hit. All right, we need two tablespoons of rice vinegar and two tablespoons of soy, soy sauce. So two, two tablespoons of rice vinegar right here. Yep. Two tablespoons of soy sauce. All right. Uh, and then we need uh, a cup of the barley. Okay, we just did one cup of barley. Yeah, we got a cup of barley right here. We're gonna dump, dump that in, all right? Okay, we're gonna add two tablespoons chia seeds. Let me get the chia seeds stirred up so there's no clumps. All right, let me know when you're ready for this. I'm ready. All right, putting in one 15 ounce can of chickpeas, garbanzo beans, uh, drained and rinsed. Perfect. All right. Uh, chia seed, garbanzo beans. All right, we need fire roasted corn. So we need a 15 ounce bag. This bag is uh, is 16 ounce. We got a little bit of left over. We're using it all. Like you can't have too much fire roasted corn, right? It's a soup, you guys, right? Yeah. And yeah. Go big or go home. We, we've got all the. I doubled the veggies. The yeah. non-starchy veggies. So don't be stingy with the corn. Okay, gave this a nice stir. We're gonna add our fire roasted tomato and the remaining tomatoes. So these are the Costco tomatoes. It's got a pull top. I love that. It's one of the reasons we get our organic vegetables in the can, like the garbanzo beans from Target. Same thing. Great price and a pull top. It doesn't matter here at home, but when we're on vacation and doing this stuff, like in cabins, we like the pull top because I don't need desserts and I want the can opener. All right, so these are supposed to be four cans of fire roasted tomatoes. We don't have, like he was saying, we don't have four cans. We have one can. So it's 
it's one can of fire roast tomatoes and three regular tomatoes, but if you have four cans of fire roast to put that in. But we did use the fire roast of Poblano and I peppers. That's gonna more than make up for it, like Tim was saying earlier. That's what he was talking about. Absolutely. Did you get a can without a pull top? Oh, the humanity. <laughs> so the recipe calls for a half a cup of green peas. I'm gonna change that to a cup because again, don't be stingy with the peas. All right, so we need a cup of green peas right here. Oh yeah, baby, look at all those peas. All right, all right. so now Tim's just gonna start stirring this stuff over here. We're just gonna kind of stir, we just threw a lot of ingredients in there, right? So we wanna kind of move it around and fold it and, and move the top to the bottom and the bottom to the top and get all, look, look how good that looks. Like, look at all those veggies in there. That looks amazing. At this point. Well, hang on, while we're doing this, I'm still eating my Thanksgiving stuffing because I'm so hungry. All right, go ahead. Okay, we have two ingredients left. Lemon juice and then the spinach. Spinach That gets incorporated at the end. It's like a nice finishing touch. And then we have, sorry, we have three. So one more, and that's the bay leaves. Oh yeah, those gotta go in now. Time for the bay leaves. All right, those kind of just push in, but you don't want to break them. All right. All right, so I'm gonna turn the heat up and we'll bring this to a boil. Actually, let's bring, bring it to a boil first, <laughs> then we'll cover it. Man, this looks so good. Like, I, I really dislike making this soup because of all the steps, but when this soup comes together, like, there is nothing like it. It is just a hearty, full meal, and it delivers, right? Yeah. All right, we're giving this a stir. It's not quite up to a boil. And let's take a quick minute over here to look who is joining us. Little Red with his uh, holiday baking crew outfit on. Uh, notice here he's got just the right measuring spoons. I guess he's making cookies because he's got some little cookie molds. You've got the tree and the gingerbread man and the star. Uh, little Red always has the right outfit on. All of Little Red's clothes are furnished by uh, the Red Alp shop uh, on Etsy. Uh, Juliana has an amazing store there. Yes. If you do the Alp every year, which we do, uh, all the little outfits really kind of add to the holiday experience. Uh, I'm going to start doing it in my classroom because the kids love them also. Uh, so check out Juliana's uh, shop, the Red Alp shop at, on Etsy and uh, okay. tell her I said hello and uh, she'll take really good care of you, I promise. All right, so we're kind of at the boil. So let's give it a stir again, Tim one more time, and then we'll put the cover on, turn the heat down, let it simmer for 45 minutes. I did a nice run against the bottom here. It's free, so the boiling's not affecting it. All right, let's get the cover on it, and we'll turn the heat down. And let's turn this down to simmer, so just down to one or two, right there. Yep. That should be good. All right, so while we're waiting for the 45 minutes for that, uh, Tim's gonna start prepping up the vegetables for uh, the spring roll fixings. Uh, so we've got uh, cucumbers we're gonna cu cut up. Uh, I've already got some scallions all diced up from Thanksgiving, so they're ready to go. Carrots, and then uh, we're gonna wash the Brussels sprouts, dry them off, uh, and then uh, slice them up too. So that's what we'll do for the fixings there. So let me have the bag of Brussels sprouts. I'll start getting those ready. <laughs> all right, I've got an English cucumber. Um, we're gonna Peel this just a little bit, slice the ends off, so for the composter. Then I'll cut it in fourths and chop chunks, and those chunks we put into the the spring roll. So it's kind of the plan here. All right, I did not grow up with English cucumbers. Um, we had regular cucumbers, but I guess the outside of this is less bitter. Um, that's why we use it. Um, so, all right. Cut it in half, and then we'll cut it in half one more time. And then I'll put them together here, and then we'll just make our little slices here. This is almost a weekly thing. These, having this ready, they're ready for salads as well. Cucumbers are just so good for you. Joey's not a huge fan, so it ends up just being me. All right, so we've got a little container in here. Put this in the refrigerator and keep. All right, so for the Brussels sprouts, I'm just gonna take the Brussels sprouts and I kind of just chop off like the one, the little, it's either a baby carriage, so like the stem. Yep. And then I'm just gonna just kind of slice it and shred it. Is there any easy way to shred this? I don't think there is, right? No. All right, That's and then I'm, is the best. I'm gonna kind of pull it apart and just put it in this strainer here and it'll all get washed. And then I'm just gonna move on to the next one here. I'll cut the stem off, 
Uh, and then I'm just gonna shred it. And then I'll move on to the next one. I'm just gonna fill this thing up. Once all of the, uh, cat, once all the little baby cabbages here are all shredded, then uh, I'm gonna take them to the sink and just wash them because, I mean, they're dirty. I haven't washed them yet, so we can't use them just yet. So get the compost pile here ready. Oh, the Brussels sprouts are looking good here. Yeah, I thought we'd just run them through the salad spinner. Yeah, that's They're cool. pretty heavy with water. Should I, should we do the rest of them or no? I think that's enough to start with. I think this is plenty. Right, so we'll do these, but we'll cook these. We'll roast those, right. yep. I'm gonna clean these up then. Sounds good, thank you. <clears throat> right, so the Brussels sprouts are our greens for the spring rolls. All right, there we go. Shredded Brussels sprouts. I like shredded Brussels sprouts. I think they're a lot of fun. I think it's a great way to use them. All right. So that's good. All right, so you can see right here, we've got uh, the Brussels sprouts, the carrots, the cucumbers, the, the, um, the uh, scallions. Those are ready to go into, uh, into uh, spring rolls. Let me show you what we do for the noodles. These are, we get these from Costco. They're rice noodles. Uh, brown rice noodles, and they're like cakes, right? Uh, and I just, I know there's cooking instructions, but here's what I do. I put them in a bowl, and I pour that hot tea water on it, right? And I just let it sit there for like five to 10 minutes, and that hot tea water will soften these noodles up till so they're ready to eat. And that's it, that's all I do. So, and I just drain them, and I throw them in my uh, spring roll. So this takes 10 minutes to cook in some hot water, in a dish, you don't even need to use a pot. Uh, Really simple, and that's it. So right now I'm cutting the ends off, Brussels sprouts, dividing them in half, and yeah. putting them in here, and we'll clean them in just a bit. Yeah, for these, we're, we're gonna cook these, so we just chop the little edge of the cabbage off and cut them in half, right? And that's it. All right, so the soup's been cooking for 45 minutes. We can probably take this off and see if it's done. Ooh, that's hot. Ow! We have Christmas mitts if you wanna use them. I know, I need to. All right, so I think we're at the point where we want to try this. So I'm going to ladle some of this into a bowl, and we'll see how it, how it does, all right? This is annoying, cutting all these uh, Brussels sprouts, but part of me is like, it's the non-starchy vegetables we need during the week. It is. It's exactly that's what, we that's what fills us up or gives yeah. us so much food. So it is. this is a good thing. In here, it looks good. So sure does. It is steaming hot, like... Yeah. Now we're gonna, we still have to fish out the, the bay leaf. We gotta put the lime juice in. Oh yeah. But let's just taste it anyway. And you guys, the lime juice is a nice finish. Like it gives yeah. a brightness to the flavor. But I just wanna make sure everything's everything's cooked and done. Like the carrots and all that. Okay. Stuff. All right, so the soup is done. We need to put this somewhere to cool so we can use this burner. Okay. First, I want, when we squeeze this, taste it first. I wanna make sure the lime's not bad because okay. they're, they're like, dark green or light green or... Do you want to get one more? No, but just, I mean... Yeah, it was okay, right? Perfect. All right, let's squeeze it in. It tastes really good, so... Mmm, so good. All right, and then next we need some spinach. Do you want me to cut it in half, like grab a handful? Do you want to do that and just yeah. kind of just kind of do uh, the little ribbons? Yeah, do that. But all the spinach needs to go in there. Let's just get rid of it. Otherwise, I'm going to throw it out. I don't want to throw it out. It's not like our soup's gonna be too spinachy. Like, I don't care. Let's pop that in there. Okay. Oh man, let's put the rest of that in. Just use it all. I had no idea. Doesn't use it all. There goes my system. You have a spinach system? Yeah. I I ha hold it like a log, and then just start going down, slicing it up. I have it. This one complains about stems and stuff, and then. I'm doing this for you, sweetie. Thank you, darling. All right. All right. All right, so we just want to uh, get the spinach wilted. So we yep. got to kind of... You go ahead, sweetie. I know, but I've got bigger reach. Tim's not really fast, but a passenger. He has to be the driver. He wants to be in charge, large and in charge. All right, um, so isn't can... there something else I can use? Like, this is... That's good. Just leave this and just put it in there. It's fine. No, it's not. All right. Like every leaf needs an equal opportunity here. All right. All right. I've got the all strong 12 inch saute pan. This is the uh, five fly copper core pan. And this is our beast right here. Yeah, that copper is just gonna make it more responsive to the heat. Yeah. So 
that's why we bring it up. Like it's a it's a good to have. Yeah, thank you, Doll Sonic, for supplying us with all of our pots and pans and knives and silverware and everything else you've given us. All, all right. right, we got a little bit of water in here, and let's turn this on. We'll put it on medium heat. We'll give the water a minute or two to start uh, steaming. All right, we're doing a really simple recipe with uh, Brussels sprouts. We're doing two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, two tablespoons of maple syrup, and then we're just roasting this for probably about 20 minutes. So let's get the Brussels sprouts. Well, let's put our mix in. No, let's get the Brussels sprouts yep. in first, yep. right? All right, so we're gonna dump our Brussels sprouts in. This is like a bag and a half of Brussels sprouts I just cleaned. All right, we wanna get these uh, heating up and cooking. All right, so for right now, we just we need to get this all warmed up. Yeah, we just want this to start sauteing. So we'll give that a few minutes saute. Let's add a little bit of salt there so it sweats it a little bit. Okay. All right, you can see right here, the soup is really nice and uh, all, all uh, mixed with the, the greens in it and all that. It looks amazing. So this is ready to pour. You can see the steam still coming off it. We're just letting it cool off and then we're gonna then we're gonna container it up. Okay, we're ready to, these have been steaming for a bit and a little bit of water we put in uh, for about five minutes. Yep, and this is three pounds of Brussels sprouts. Yep. We put a little salt and pepper, we saw that, we ground that in. And now we're ready to add our balsamic vinegar and our maple syrup. So for one pound, it's two tablespoons. So we're gonna do six of each on this because we have three pounds. And since I don't have an overhead camera, we're just doing it this way. All right, so six tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, right? Check. All right, so what's next? Maple syrup is next. All right, what about spices? You can add a little bit of garlic here if you want. But like salt and pepper? We, we already added it. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right, so, so very simple. I mean, so now we've got a little solution there, so we just kind of let it cook in that. Is that what we're doing? Exactly. All right. All right, I've just tossed these all these veggies. They're well coated. It's bubbling. We're gonna put a lid on this. Let's cover it up, baby. All right, there we go. So we'll just give that you know, 10 minutes to cook or 20 yep. minutes, what do you think? I think we'll check that 10 minutes. Sir. We're just doing this on the fly. We're at our 10 minute mark. These Brussels sprouts are looking good as far as being moist. Hey, Everything's covered. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I think those are ready. We just probably turn those off. Yep, I think one of our strategies this week when I get them from the fridge, I can put them in the air fryer, cook them up, they'll be yeah, perfect. If you want to, you want yeah. to crisp them up, but otherwise yeah. I think they're fine. All, All right. right. We have so, a non-starchy vegetable. Have we done everything we wanted to do? I think we've accomplished everything we set out to do. So, uh, great. So that's everything. Uh, we've been cooking for four hours. Uh, we went through three camera batteries. Like, I'm done. So that's our video for today. Yeah. Hit that like button. Show us some love. Uh, click on the subscribe button. You get notified every time we have a new video, usually every Tuesday. Join Patreon. We've got Patreon-only content now, so uh, you'll get to see that. And leave a comment below. Are you? I mean, it's the holiday. Are you meal prepping during the holiday? Mm -hmm. A lot of people just wing it, right? Yeah, we had a wonderful Thanksgiving. Yeah. We are losing weight. We are feeling better than ever. Yeah. So anyway, I hope this inspires you. We're just sharing what we do, um, but this is working. So I hope this inspires you. Okay. See you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>